um, why, why should I care or why should you care about transit in Toronto? Um, and I think there are two reasons. One, one is that we have a really cruddy system, uh, one that, we, uh, that should be much better, um, uh, we deserve much better, and the other is we have a poorly conceived system, uh, which partly accounts for it being cruddy. Um, so I want to talk about two things that were almost entirely absent from the municipal election debates around transit that we've had for uh, ad nauseum for, for much of this year. Um, one is the actual performance of the Toronto Transit Commission now. Not what it's going to be like in 10 years or 20 years, but what it is like now. And the second is how we have failed abysmally to relate the two most important things in the city, or two of the three most important things in the city, land use planning and transit planning. And, and the, these, these things are not, re, not unrelated, how our current performance is related to our, our lack of integration. But let's talk about our current performance. I, I, I could go on, I mean, I could just describe my journey here this evening from downtown Toronto. I, I, I was just talking to my good old friend Don Stevenson here about how I came back from a third world country eight years ago to Toronto um, and felt from a transit perspective I was going from the first world to the third world rather than going from the third world to the first world. Eight days ago I was in Copenhagen and, and had been there for a few days. Uh, it has to be one of the nicest cities in the world and it has to have one of the best transit systems in the world. But you have to go to a city like Copenhagen to appreciate, I and mean, if we were even half as good as they are there. It's not that the problems are not recognized. Adam has been partly responsible for a report that was issued today by the union. It has 68 recommendations. About 45 of them are concerned with the poor quality of the current system and how it can be approved, improved. The TDC, as, as Adam mentioned, in August came out with its own report about the poor quality of our current service. And it had nine recommendations, very good rec you, you will remember one of them, changing the trip from a, an origin to destination to a two hour use of the system. That, that was one of the TDC recommendations, which ATU had endorsed today. It's quite clear we have a problem, and we've had a problem for years. But my solutions to this, or not solutions, but contributions to this, are that we're not going far enough in our thinking about how to resolve it, both immediately and in the broader picture to do with land use. Immediately, we should do what the much more left-wing countries have been doing for years and years and years, and that is consider privatizing, contracting out the management of our TDC. Why did ACU come up with 45 recommendations about how bad our current system is? Because for years and years and years, we have had a cruddy management of the TDC. I don't want to go into details, I don't want to go into people, and I will admit that we've had some improvement recently, but there is so far to catch up. And what other places have done, essentially the whole of Scandinavia, the whole of Germany, the whole of France, the whole of Britain, many other countries, uh, much of China, they have contracted out the management of their systems to professionals. Stockholm subway system, for example, is run by the organization that I regard, and I work for them, so I'm a bit biased, as the best transit managers in the world. That is the Hong Kong MTR, Mass Transit Railway. They, they beat the previous contractor was Deutsche Bahn, who are probably, this is the German railway, probably the second best in the world. But MTR beat out Deutsche Bahn in November 2012 for the Stockholm subway can give many, many more examples about how there is a degree of professionalism, of management that is available in the world that we are not taking advantage of. That's the big 
contribution that I think you should be thinking about and caring about. The second one is addressing some very particular things using the resources that we have. There's been a remarkable thing that's happened in Toronto with the Liberty Village bus. You, you've probably heard about this where some people have got together and said the King Street car is absolutely appalling, we've got to do something about it, um, and we've got to provide a better service. And they're now, if you look at their website, which is a very interesting website, talking about expanding their um, service to other parts of the world, where you pay five bucks per trip, you, you, but you pay it in advance, it's a kind of membership deal. But there's a better way of doing that. And I would like to see our council or our, or our transit system take the initiative. And that is to license our cab system so that it can operate jitneys along, jitneys meaning multiple use cabs, along route, major routes during rush hour. Charging this, just about the same amount as, as the, 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 the Liberty Village bus charges. Five bucks a trip. So if you want, if you're on the King Street car, you absolutely have to get to that appointment. You're on the King Street car route. Cab comes along, we'll take you for five bucks flat fare, and we'll take other people as well. I don't want to go into the details, but it operates well in other cities, and, and we could do that kind of thing. We could cream off the top one or two percent of the crowd along the King Street car, the Queen Street car, the Dufferin bus, any route you might, may, may like to name. And you cream one or two percent off and you reduce, uh, you, you, you make things much better than one or two percent better. Another thing we should do is consider doing what Montreal does, where, where, where Adam is now working in part. And that is using taxi buses. Where my son used to live, right at the west end of Montreal Island in Senville, there is no bus service. There is a taxi bus service. A taxi bus service operated by the local bus uh, taxi companies takes you uh, on fixed routes at fixed times with a call um, to uh, where, where you want to go, which is usually the, the railway station and the, the suburban rail station in the next municipality, saint on de Bellevue. Rimouski in Quebec has actually transferred the whole of their system over from regular buses to taxi buses. They just come back with one route on the regular buses. We have many parts of Toronto that could provide much more cost effectively than we do now, low density parts, a really good service with taxis, with our essentially underused and, and capable of expansion and essentially taxpayer cost free. In Rimouski, the, the, the um, uh, the dispatch system is run by the city, but the, the all of, everything else is, 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 is free. So make use of the resources that we have at essentially no cost. The last thing I, I, I would propose, and I have about 60 recommendations like this, is reintroduce trolley buses. We got rid of our trolley buses in 1992. Vancouver didn't. They are the core, the backbone of Vancouver's system. Um, and, and they are far superior in almost every respect, not quite every respect for an urban system. No pollution, faster acceleration, uh, quiet, etc., etc. On, on part of the city where I live, close to a main road, the noisiest vehicles, apart from the fire trucks, are the TDC buses. Noisier than the trucks. But that is the now, that is the next year, that is the year after. We should be caring about this. But there's, there's a bigger problem. And it's not this young line. This young line, we've managed, except for a couple of stations like Roseville, uh, Rosedale and Summerhill, we've managed to integrate um, uh, transit and, and land use development not too badly. But look at the line that runs parallel to the young line. Look at the Spadina line. Um, installed in 1978, and I defy you to point to a single piece of development that over the 35 years, 35 years of that line being there, has become associated with that line. 
And it's now being extended to York Region. It's now being extended to Vaughan Metro Center, as it's called. And apart from Vaughan Metro Center itself, where there is not yet a single piece of development, even though it's going to open in 2017, that in every other place there's not even a plan for development. And the only place that's going to put out any ridership is, is York University, where the ridership already exists because they have 1,400 buses a day going to and from York University from different places. But you don't have to confine it to the worst example, which is the Spadina Line. I mean, just look at Eglinton West, nothing. Dupont, nothing. St. Clair West, nothing. Um, Glen Cairn, less than nothing. <laughs> Lawrence West, okay? I mean, you can just do this, but you, you can go on the floor line. Spadina, hardly anything. Bathurst, I'm going west, I could go east. Bathurst, nothing. Christie, nothing. Ossington, nothing. I mean, you can just go on. You get to Lansdowne, there's a little bit of development there. And that was in, that's been there for 45 years, not 35 years. We have failed miserably to integrate our land use and our, and our um, transit planning. And you might say, well, um, Surely, if we had more development of some of these stations, we've had, we would have even more crowded trains. Well, we would have more passengers, but, you know, looking back again at Hong Kong, Hong Kong runs, at its peak, 75,000 passengers per direction per hour. If we get to 30, 30, on the Toronto system, we are doing well. And typically, we're around 25 to 28 at the peak. What is the difference? Well, it's longer trains, it's better signaling, it's better platform arrangements, etc., etc. But we have planned for mediocrity here. We have planned for not having enough riders. In Hong Kong, the riders pay for the system, essentially. That's like any business. And I'm not saying that could happen immediately but we could reconfigure our system so that, yes, we would certainly need subsidy in the short term, but if we had enough ridership and we had enough integration of land use planning and, and transit planning, we could have a much better system that more or less pay for itself, as happens in other countries. Thank you.